Shalom of Racha to all. Thank you guys for joining. I'm <clears throat> just finishing setting up one second. I'll be with all of you and all of us together. Okay. So with the help of the master of the world and in the schus of all the chaver getting together to learn, it's such a privilege to be back with you. It's been a long time, like she was pointing out. That's right. It has been a long time and I've missed it. And I've missed you and I've missed our learning. And I'm super excited to jump back into our limud of Sicha Saran, Rabbi Nachman's masterpiece of chizuk and guidance. And we pick up where we left off Mamish Baderech. Mamish Baderech, like Rabbi Nachman tells us in the beginning of Sipur Emaisius, Baderech, Sipart Maisa. Everything with Rabbi Nachman is Baderech. It's all along the way. And we've been on a derech now for a long time, before Pesach, the derech of Sichon and Aleph. Sichon and Aleph, if you remember, and we're getting up to Shavuos again, Rabbi Nachman spent Shavuos night revealing grandfatherly wisdom, like we learned about. Mamash like a Zayda. Mamash like a Zayda, and Rabbi Nachman wasn't a Zayda. Mamash going ahead and giving over advice, like a person who had been through life, and a person who is guiding us, a person on the night of Shavuos with clarity, who is going to deliver clear and practical guidance for life that we're supposed to take with us and try to apply to our lives with Hashem's help. So as you can see, it's a little bit of a new setting here in Yerushalayim, and it's a little bit noisy also in the background. So Bezer Hashem, I hope that we can, uh, we can hear each other and focus and dive right in with HaKadosh Baruch Hu's help. So I hope that everybody's doing well. I hope you all had a beautiful Lichtig Pesach. And um, let's jump right back in. To Sicha Saran, Nun Aleph. This is the seventh, I think G is the seventh letter in the alphabet. This is the seventh shear in Sicha Saran Nun Aleph. And second, okay. Says the Rebbe. A new segment, new phase in this revelation in this Gilui. Another very important foundational rule of the tzaddik. Hefkeirus ein srichem. You don't need hefkeirus. What does it mean, hefkeirus? Hefkeirus, hefker means to be hefker. Something's for free. You give something up. Hefker means that something is ownerless. But in the context of this teaching, we can read it as fanatical irresponsibility, hefkeirus. When a person loses all sense of commitment to the regular boundaries of the things to which he is acquired, to the ways in which he is owned, to the things that he respects as boundaries of his life in terms of what he needs to take care of and the responsibilities of how to be a person and how to be a Jew, says Rabbi Nachman, hefkeirus, when we're trying to come close to Hashem, which is what the whole thing of Rabbi Nachman is, that's all it is, and what the whole thing of Sichas Ran Nun Aleph is specifically, is trying to guide us to learn how to slowly but surely come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how to live a life of meaning, how to live a life of purpose, of fulfillment, not to waste a second. It says the Tzaddik, along this path, Hefgeris Ein Srichen. You don't either need to become fanatically irresponsible. Now, the Rebbe is going to get into what that means. But first, he sets it up this way. He says, as a caveat, <laughs> To me, this is not called hefkeris. When a person lets go of Olam Hazen, and a person, so to speak, lets himself slide in the sense of not being a person who's worried or bothered with regard to this worldly realities, whether it's parnasa, whether it's mundane responsibilities and banking and health insurance and, and uh, you know, renewing your passport and just all these things that a person needs to do. If a person would not focus on any of that at all, that's not, that's not called hefkeiris. Says Rabbi Nachman, the contrary, the opposite is true. He says, you know what real hefkeris means is a person 
who's hefker from Hashem, means a person who lets go of the reality that he is here owned by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We refer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu as our acquirer, Lassus Ritzayin Koinoi, the Koine Hakal. We belong to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He says a person who lets go of that reality, that's called Hefgeris. Even if he's the most you know, a serious person about taking care of everything he needs to take care of in Olam Azeh, if a person is disconnected from the true reason that he was sent to this world, that's called Mufkar. That's called Mufkar Ve'emes. But with that having been said, while that's true, even this that the world calls Hefkeris, and here he defines it. He lets go of everything having to do with this world. completely, and focuses only on serving Hashem and tefillah and Torah mitzvahs ma'asim tayvim from morning until night and forgets that he's a person and forgets that there are responsibilities personal, familial, communal, inyanim having to do with this world. That the world considers to be hefkeirus, a person who's just stam, he's, he's a fanatic, he's irresponsible. Gamze in srichim, says the Rebbe. You don't need to go to this extent in your avoida. Because it's possible to become an ish kasher on the highest of levels. Rabbi Nachman didn't just settle for a bidiyevit, ish kasher. Mamish meant mamish ish kasher on the highest level, but beli hefgeris. That's the beautiful thing about chasidus bechlal and breslov of Bifrat, is that we're given the opportunity to live life on an incredibly lofty level. But by the same token, we're mamish able to live normal lives. And the chaye yom yom of having the yishav adas, whether it means earning a parnasa, whether it means spending adequate time with our children and with our spouse, Bezer Hashem, at the right time and in the right way, and with our community and with friends, and 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 a ben azmanim, and then during this man, and then a vacation, and 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 you know all the different inyanim of olam hazeh. That's not a stira to becoming an ish kasher. Because Rabbi Nachman says these two things go not just, they, they don't, they're not a stira, they mamish complement each other. To be a person who is devoted kalkulai to giluk fight shamai, and that that's what we daven for. And like we always say, aleinu l'shabeach is the mission statement of a yid. That's why when we wake up in the morning, that's mamish the foundation. Moide ani lefanecha. Ani and lefanecha. The definition and the, and the review every morning of who I am and what you are, Rebbe Shalom. That's mamish the foundation. And then we wake up and then we get out of bed and we wash negavasa and we go through the whole morning routine, whatever that is for each of us. We go to shul, hopefully that's a part of it, for the men at least, and we daven. And then at the end of davening, we say aleinu l'shabeach, which is supposed to set the intention for the entire day. L'sakin oylam b'malchus shakai, b'chol b'nei basar yikur b'shmechem. Ki amalchus shalcha hi, b'li omi ad timlech b'chavayt. All of this is the mission statement of a yid. Once we've clarified what the ani is, moida ani, and the lifanecha, aleinu l'shabeach, right before we leave, to get involved in all the different things we have to do with our day, and Hashem should bless us that we have time to focus on Yiddish kait mamash, you know, kviyas itim l'tayra, and just in terms of the way that we think. But we leave shul with this in our pocket. So a person who's devoted to this, a person who's an alim l'shabeach yid, this is what we daven for. This is what will make us happy. And anything outside of that is not real happiness. Kol zman that the shechinahs and galahs. Kol zman that the world is not mitukan. Kol zman that there's cruelty. Kol zman that there's war. Kol zman that there's hunger. Kol zman that there's impurity. Kol zman that there's loneliness. 
a person who mamish lives in that way is then able to utilize the kalim of Olamaze in a responsible, put together, seichel dika way, and to allow those kalim, adarabba, not a stira, adarabba, to become the greatest vessel for the ambition of doing everything in his or her ability to utilize the human condition and the reality of what it means to be a human being through the chaye yom yom, a normal guy, to become a kli for the greatest giloy of the Arab of the Shechina. Yechoylim liyos, ish kosher, to mamish be an ish kosher, and I'll speak about that more in a minute, the li hefgeris, without letting go one iota of making sure that we're living responsibly with our feet on the ground, but mamish with our head in the clouds. And these two things can go together. And that's the shlameless of a yid. That's a shlameless of a vayda. You know, it's something that a chavr like us, for sure, who are learning this farm like this, we have the privilege of learning from the tzaddikim, we grapple with a lot. Because on the one hand, for sure, in the Musra's farm, Yisharim, certainly when you get to the end, Precious speaks a lot about Getting, getting, getting distant, removing ourselves from the loneliness of Alamazin. Precious, hispaididos, the Mesil Susharim, hispaididos, what that means, to separate ourselves and to remove ourselves and to get rid of all the taivas, v'chule, v'chule. So sometimes we have a difficult time squaring that with the Hasidish idea of dir v'tachtoinim and alias nitzaitzes and other abadavka through engaging with the physical world. How do you how do you deal with that? How do you grapple with that? And I think that the way that the Rebbe sets it up here is a pitaron, is an answer to that struggle, to that tension. Because the Rebbe isn't talking about a, a, you know an overly hedonistic self-gratifying lifestyle of a, of a person who's mamish inextricably bound with this world, who's an ish gashmi and also an ish kosher. That, that's, that's already, those two things don't go together. Those two things don't go together. If our musagim are the musag, which we'll learn about, of mamish olam hazeh, that's our musag, that's what we think about, that's what we're working toward, that's what we get excited about, that's what we look forward to, that kind of thing, then it's very difficult to at the same time manage to be an ish kosher. But if we're defining our experience of this world as beli hefgeros, that's how we're defining it. To live a responsible life. To make time in our daily schedule, in our weekly schedule, in our monthly schedule, in the framework of our lives for all the things that are important having to do with Olam Hazeh, without which we would be called mufkar. We would be called mamish, the basic bare minimum of living life as a responsible human being. Says the Rebbe, when you can put these two things together, that's the shlameless of what it is to be a yid. The one avoida, where we refer to HaKadosh Baruch as having chosen Am Yisrael. Ashabach Arbanu. Where, where we refer to, uh, to, to this, that, that uh, sorry, v'ratzavan, that a Kodesh Baruch who wants us and he needs us for something unique is when is in Kiddush. Because Kiddush is the encapsulation of what it is to be a Yid. To take a cup of wine, to take a cup of something gashmi, and to hold it in our hands, to be shoylet on the yayin, and mamish to make a bracha on it. And it becomes the most glorious, glorious avoida. Dafka in that moment. Before we drink it, to hold it in our hand, it's a kli, it's in the context of our avoida. And then we're able to engage with it in a way of kedusha. This is what it is to be a yid, to bring this balance together. It doesn't mean to be a, you know, a, like a like a glutton and a, and a person who's who's completely you know mukar to this world, but believe hefgeris hefgeris says the Rebbe hefgeris ein tzrich. Yichoyel lius ish kasher. I was describing to somebody today. I learned with Chavrusa earlier, and I told him that 
recently I came across this interesting thing that a company in America, Eden, they did this incredible thing where they took a phone and instead of the normal arrangement where we have like, you know, the, the, the regular Google or Mac operating system that then we need to filter, right? Because it has a browser and it has all these, you know, the app store and all these different things. You can download, uh, you know, different apps or you can install some sort of program to get it filtered. They mamish took a phone. I don't even know, understand what this means. They took the hardware of a phone and they installed the operating system of the company. So it doesn't run off Google, it doesn't run off Android, it doesn't run off Apple, none of the operating systems. They built it in Mamish from the bottom, from the bottom up, they put in, they installed a kosher operating system. And I thought this was such a good muscle for the distinction between Stam Yiddishkeit and what Hasidus and most specifically what Rabbi Nachman is trying to do with us. Because so often it's so easy to consider ourselves as running off the operating system of an American or of an Israeli or of a uh, Canadian or wherever we are in the world, that's our OS. And then we have to filter that because there are some things there, many things, most things, could come out all the things that aren't in alignment with Jewish values. And so we install our own apps and we close the browser and we shut this, you know, that app store and we try to figure it out to make it so that our American operating system can jive with the Torah's expectation for us on a daily level in terms of our responsibilities, what we need to do in terms of Rabbi Hashem. Rabbi Nachman came and said, no, 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 we have to do something else. We have to do something else entirely. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants that we should be serving him using the OS of a Yid. Not that we should stem, figure out some sort of way to use a foreign operating system in such a way that doesn't exactly, you know, uh, contradict this lifestyle of Kedusha, but that, that should be our OS. That should be our operating system, Be'etzem. This is who we are. And then we have to consider out of that kind of perspective, well, what else can we bring into our lives? What else can we fit? What else can we engage with that will not be contradictory, but Adarava will enable me to expand this Avoida into other apps, so to speak. But the operating system is that of Mamash of Ayid. And that's what it means to be an Ish Kasher. If we are Ish or Anshe, Kosher, at the source, at the essence, that's who we are, then we don't have to worry about Hefgeris. We don't have to worry about not being Mufka. Then we can engage with the with life in all of its colors. Calls man that it's meklipas noiga, that it's elevatable, that it's not something that's the shosh klipas atmeis legamri. It's nothing usher, but it's the mutter of life. We can engage with it. We can live as part of a community in a responsible way. Believe have cares. And the Rebbe continues. Mi'iti, says Rav Nachman, take it from me personal advice, just me and you. And this really can be seen as the encapsulation of the Rebbe's whole teaching. Do not allow yourself to be fooled by this world. And the Lushen is so strong because the Lushen really parallels what we spoke about in the, in the previous paragraph. In the previous paragraph, the Rebbe told us, or really two paragraphs ago, That's not called a Fgerus, a person that's Mufka from Olam Azet, calls man that he's plugged into Olam Abba, that he's belonging in the, the, to the Rishus Yachid of HaKadosh Baruch, the Rishus Yachid of Olam. That's not called Efkeris. The Rebbe says, you know what's called Efkeris? Like we said, when a person just devotes himself to Olam and a person is no longer in a matziv of seeing himself as being acquired to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, belonging to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, here to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's really called Efkeris. 
So we hear Ibn Nachman says, Don't allow yourself to become mufkar to the world, meaning away from Avada Hashem. To just let go and allow yourself to be swept along by the illusion of this world with all of its promises. Because lahatois, that leads you in one direction and one direction only. And that's the direction of allowing yourself consciously or subconsciously to be fooled and tricked in the most devastating way, the most devastating way. And we're gonna we're gonna learn by Israel Hashem from Ramnasan in a few pieces about just how devastating this trick is, this folly is. But first the Rebbe continues, let not the world fool you. There was never found one individual who achieved fulfillment and the soif toiv min ha'olam from this world alone. Meaning from oilam azeh. V'chol b'nei adam shahayu. And every single individual from the beginning of time until this moment and from this moment to the end of time. Even people that reached the pinnacle of, of whatever you can imagine, success, whatever success means in a, in, a, in a physical sense. By most people, it's wealth, physical strength, status, covered, you name it. At the end, it was very, very bitter. They had no legacy to give over. They had nothing of meaning to pass over to their children and to their children's children. And today, increasingly, the children are already out of the picture. People aren't having children. The more successful you are, the more wealthy you are, the more children you could afford, the less children you have today in the world, right? But if they left children over at the very end, when those children surrounded their bed, what kind of feeling do you think that they had? Like they always say, you'll never think, oh, I wish I had spent one more hour at the office, right? But it's not only that. It's not only, I wish I had, I wish, you know, you won't say, I wish I had worked more. A person won't even say, I wish I had vacation more. Because of what value is that? Of what value is an investment in in Gashmias, of what value? And here the Rebbe says an interesting thing, and it aligns with this that the Rebbe spoke more than anybody else about the Goyim, about the nations of the world being able to draw close to Kedusha, which will happen in the times of Mashiach, in the times of Adam Haba, and the Elif Hashmini. When the Beis HaMikdash is rebuilt, Gibesi, Beis Tfili, Yikare, Lechol Ha'amen. Rabbi Nachman is tired about this. Tarek of Zayin and the Kutumran speaks about this Indian. Lekal Echad Yashlech, Ali Lezavay, Veli Lekaspay, Pasek in Chabakuk. All the nations of the world will cast away their idols. La'av the Shechem Echad, and they'll come to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's a messianic vision. In Olam Azeh and Golos, we don't involve ourselves with trying to missionize. We don't involve ourselves with trying to make Geirim. But there were individuals who were messianic figures whose hearts and minds and neshamas were pulsating with the spirit of Geula, the spirit of redemption, who indeed involved themselves with this. Just like the Avis HaKadoshim did. Avraham was the Rosh of the Geirim. Avraham was creating nefashas. What does that mean? Say Chazal. He was, he was being Megar Geirim. Which is like kekatan shenoyla dami. His mom is like a like a uh, like a newborn child. Yaakov Avinu, byeishav Yaakov eretz migure aviv eretz kenan. Yaakov Avinu went to the land of the dwelling of his father. The pasuk says la eretz migure aviv says Chazal. He involved himself in the avoda that his father Yitzchak involved himself in. What was that avoda? Geirin to make Geirin. You find that the avos were involved in this. 
Rabbi Nachman, I don't know if he actually involved himself and mom is trying to make Gerim. I don't know if that was possible soci you know, sociologically. Rabbi Nachman spent time with, with, uh, with the, with the Kaifrim, with the heretics, with the Maskilim being the car of them, but with Goyim, I don't know. But Rabbi Nachman spoke about this. And so we hear that's reflected in this little line here. The Rebbe said, His vision was big, was wide, was beyond just Am Yisrael, just beyond Am Yisrael to the whole world. The Goyim need to know this too. Because it's a chaval, not because they need to. That's their Indian. They're here, rooted in Olam Azed to be here so that we can shine a light unto them. That's the hope. That's the dream. Or la Goyim. But in the meantime, even though they won't get Gehenim, whatever it is, they're not expected to. They need to keep the Shevaz Mitzvah's Benenayach. Outside of that, let them live the most Gashmi life in the world. But it's a Chaval, says the Rebbe, not because of Olam Abba, and that's the point. Because of Olam Azeh. Me'acha she'in ha'olam azeh klum. So it's pointless. So it's just nebuch. You have mercy. It's, it's a human being, right? It's a human being. So you have you have mercy on him. You have Rahmanas on him. You pass him in the street. And you're like, what? Like, well, what are you even living for? Forget about Olam Haba. It's not an akud. That's that's the what that's the point that I'm trying to make. Is that Ibn Ahmed's not speaking about klapi Olam Haba. So it's silly to live a world of Gashmi is because you're going to lose out on all the schar and how much schar you could be getting. That's not where he's going. Of course, that's a chilek of it, huge chilek of it. That's not what he's saying here. The main thing is Olam Hazeh. People who are not aligned with the logic of the Torah, which is an anti-logic, meaning to say, it's a logic that counters the logic of Olam Hazeh, because this world is an Olam Hafuch. And what we see when we go to the next world is an Olam Hafuch, or EC, that means that whatever we think is logical in this world with our philosophical anal you know, an analysis and analyzation is mamish the opposite of the objective truth. But the Torah comes from that Olam Hafuch. The Torah comes from the right side up world, down into the upside down esrug of this Olam Hasiyah. And the Torah's logic toward how to figure out living a life filled with tainug, tainug, oneg, mamish pleasure, mamish pleasure, is oftentimes counter logical. For example, Say Chazal, this is one Nakuda speaking about the Nakuda of Bris, right? Which is obviously one of the primary headquarters of hedonistic Gashmias engagement in this world and the primary Yitzhahara Ikra the Yitzhah Bishal says the Zara Kaddish say Chazal a counter a counterintuitive thing Aver Katan Yesh Adam we have this capacity Re'evoy Sabe and Sabe Ra'ev the more a person tries to satisfy, the more a person tries to pleasure, the more a person tries to engage in this nikuda, the less he has. It's, it's, it's not the normal logic of this world. And the more a person stays away and the less a person engages with this sabe. And a person involves himself in this kind of area of Gashmis, but in all areas of Gashmis, in a way of Kedusha and Tara, in a way that's mitsumsum, in a way that's associated with the shame of the bris and the shame of that area of the body, which is related to the sphere of Yisod, that the shame is shame shakai, and the shame shakai means misha amr lo ilam, I die. That's the place where we're able to put gedarim in place. Kol makam shata moitzi geder erva shamata moitzi kedusha. This is the area where we're able to put gedarim in place. Paradoxically, the less you have, mamish, the more you have. Mamish, the more you have. And this is only one example. The Tana de Belio says in Parakid Gimel, and the Medrash brings this as well, it's a Gemara in Sanhedrin in a certain way. The more a person runs after covet, the more covet running, running away from him. The more a person runs away from covet, it makes it clear that that's not what he's after, but he's mamish there for Kvot Shemai, the more covet runs after him. Again, counter logical. 
The world hasn't gotten this message yet, not even mitzvahs. And we're talking about thousands of years of people who are experts in Olam Hazed. They know nothing about it. Again, I want to make this again clear. We're not speaking about Olam Abba, not speaking about schar, I'm not speaking about you know, you know, how to use our time properly here so that one day we'll get to Olam Abba. Talking about Mamish living a life of Gashmi is that's bursting with the greatest timing in the world. That's the secret that Am Yisrael know. And the way to sum up this empty logic and the way to quantify it is that the Torah is quality over quantity. And the world is still making the mistake of quantity over quality. That's really how you sum it up. The world considers quantity and we speak, of course, about this in the second chapter of the story of our lives, in the context of the lost princess, the six sons, and the princess, all this, Nakuda, quality and quantity. The world still considers quantity to be of the most attractive import. More houses, more cars, more stakes, more vacations, more, 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 more. But in the meantime, Sometimes paradoxically, dafka, because of the amount of quantity, the quality is, is lost. It's like mamish eating pizza every, every day. So once a month, it's enjoyable. Once a week, it's already, it's not so. And then mamish, you eat pizza every day. It's, it's nausea, it's posh and nauseating. How does that work? That doesn't make sense. What do you mean? It's tight, it's tiny. Pizza's delicious. It's a delicious delicacy. It's, it's yum. What's this nakuda where the more you have, the less you have? But that's exactly the sod that the Torah comes to tell us. To teach us not just how to make sure that we don't waste our lives so that one day we'll be able to have Pir Kim and the Zivashchina and Olam Haba, all of that. But how to live in this world in the most elevated way what it means a marriage, what it means to raise children, what it means to be a good friend, what it means to respect someone, what it means to gain another person's respect, not because you're trying, but because you're a respectable person. What it means keep it out of aim relationships with parents, with siblings. What it means to engage in gashmias, whether it's achila and it's good food whether it's vacationing, but all of it is done in a way of geder. It's all done in a way of shakai, misha amala ilama dai, which is the defining factor of the yisod of Adam, that we all come from this nikud of yisod. We all come through the channel of sha'amar ilama dai. That's how you bring a human into the world. That's our essence. That's what it means to be a person and not a behemoth. This is the secret of the Torah. This is the secret of quality over quantity. And it's the anti-logic. It's the counterintuitive logic of the Olam Elyon, of the Olam Hafuch Ra'isi. Says the Rebbe, Nebuch HaMegayim. Nebuch, because they're also missing out. on Anachayim Toivim. And that's Rabbi Nachman once said, and it's recorded in Chaim Aran. We've said this in the past. Rabbi Nachman once said, Yesh Kama Minei Chayim. There are many different kinds of life. We all live in this world, but there's a, a billion different ways that we could be living, different experiences, different ways to spend our time, different levels to live on of understanding and consciousness and places to live and people to see. said the Rebbe, today, today I lived the good life. And then in a But a Kodesh Baruch who wanted to give us schar mitzvah is the mitzvah itself in this world and the way in which the mitzvahs enable us to become mamish b'nei adam. And so the Rebbe says again, because this world is nothing. They also have to figure it out, like how to live properly. And al zed srichim zechim and hashemayim for this. They're going to need mamish, mamish, siyat, Because this world is just nothing at all. 
right? Or rather, or rather, liskos leda mashet srichem lasos. They'll need siyata deshmaya to be able to understand what to do and how to spend their time in a way that's going to fill their lives with the oneg of quality, mamish quality. Ach Yisrael in srichem lasos. But Am Yisrael no longer need this special siyata deshmaya. Ki kvar heim yoyidim alas esayidei hatayra. Because we already know a little bit what this life is about. We already know these secrets, and it requires bitol, because the norms of Olam Hazed that start to convince us from a very, very early age that this is the real reality, and that this world is not the prosder, but this world is the in itself. This is the destination instead of the journey. All of this starts to fool us. And even though we know it to be true, but MS, because we've experienced what this is to become nauseated by Olam Hazen, to become nauseated by the quantity of what it means to live a life of hedonism to the point that we're sick of it. And it doesn't make us happy again and again and again. The more we engage in it, the less happy we become. And we know this. But the attraction is so strong and the trickery is so powerful that even though we know all of this intellectually, we still feel more comfortable trusting our senses than the logic of the Torah that's coming into our lives in a way that seems to want to make us miserable, in a way that seems to want to cause us to live lives of unnecessary restriction, and I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I have to hold back from this, and I, and I just want to be mufkar, I want to be free from it. So we're much more likely to still rely on the way in which our senses perceive this world to possibly grant us happiness, which is only in a way of quantity. But Rabbi Nachman says, the etzem, we already know what we need to do. Try it. That's the kicker over here. Doesn't need, we need to commit for the rest of your life. Try it for a month. Mamish, each of us on our level, on our madriga, where we could go ahead and make Extra, extra, extra gedarim kaddish atzmacha v'muterlach, and I'm speaking to myself now primarily. Not, not, I'm never speaking in a way of you know trying to say what anybody else needs to do. I know what I need to do, and Beis Hashem, all of us, you know, are trying to listen in and trying to apply to our lives. But I'm speaking to myself. I should take upon myself try it for a month. Each of us on our level. For me, on my level, kaddish atzmacha v'muterlach. Test it out and see if I'm not happy. See if I don't feel that my life is filled with a sense of life because I'm not being mufgar. And that goes back to what Ibn Achman said. I don't mean to say that I'm separating myself from Olam Hazen. I'm living like a hermit on a mountaintop, you know, separate from this whole world and everything. No, I don't mean that. But it means to try to go ahead and live life not with an obsession, with quantity, but rather with an engagement, with quality. So that when I do have a piece of pizza, for example, when I do, you know, have a, have a hopefully it's a Sudas mitzvah, whether it's Shabbos or it's Yantiv or whatever it is, and Mamish, we're enjoying a good wine. It's not just the taste of the wine or the smell of the wine or the quality or what the wine does to us and the feeling that it gives us to drink the wine and hold it in our mouths if we're a wine connoisseur and we enjoy that taste and what that is. It's something so much more than wine. It's a way of experiencing that wine that a guy could never imagine or that a person who is living in the way of quantity, who's drinking all the time, in a way of just trying to amass Olam Hazen in the pursuit of happiness, that's always the pursuit because it never resolves itself. It never reaches a culmination. Like the Rebbe said, It's the same cup of wine, right? But it's a whole different experience. A whole different experience. To walk through a park and to appreciate, this goes hand in hand with gratitude. It's the same Nakuda. Because I'm able to realize that even the simple things without grand ideals of Olam and Hasagas of what I need and this kind of house and this kind of car and this kind of interior decorating and this kind of, uh, you know, 
fill in the blank. But I realize what I already have is bursting with Hashem's kindness. How much we're able to appreciate the simple things in life. Like we always say, a walk in the park, it's a great muscle. Because here you can see two extremes. On the one hand, it's nothing. It's literally just, it's, it's almost nothing. You're walking through a park. Maybe you're not even walking through a park to walk through the park. You're just trying to get to the street on the other side. Or a mamish, a person can live in a way of quality so that every blade of grass and every flower, we stop with the Yishavadas and we look and we smell and we feel and we absorb. That's what it means to live a life, a chayim toivim. It's not about how much money we have in the bank, how many cars in the driveway, of how many houses, and, and everything else that you could imagine, that we could imagine. It's not about any of that. It's about having a fraction of that and engaging with the belihefkerus area of life through the consciousness, the operating system of an ishkasher, of a yid, Channeling everything for a higher purpose, being conscious of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, living with him as a reality, bringing him into our relationships. That the Shechina should be a part of our relationships, whether it's Ish and Isha, whether it's a husband, whether whether it's a, whether it's a son and a, and a father or a son and a mother, whether it's whether whether it's friends, fill in the blame. All relationships. And as much as we bring Hashem into those conversations, we have real conversations. We don't waste our speech. We don't waste our time. Every moment is accounted for. Whether it's specific for Olam Azeh, and a person is working, a person is taking care of whatever he needs to take care of, or whether it's obviously moments that are set aside for Olam Haba, Dika pursuits, whether it's learning, whether it's dappening, but all the while it's bound together with this consciousness He's an ish kosher, and therefore he's able to live with gayers. And he's not allowing the world to lead him astray. Because it will lead us astray. Such a person is living mamish, the chayim toiv. The chayim toiv. Says Rav Nassim. Let's take a look at this piece together. Gimel Ois Aleph. It says Rav Nassim, it shouldn't stay Kisha Adam, it starts with Ki Iker. Ki Iker, Ki Im Kola Oilam, Vurak Al Yedei HaTayra, the primary foundation of this world is the Tayra. Kamo Yishalam Rabbi Seinus, Chana Lebracha Chazal say, Al Hei Da Hashishi, what does this mean? Yoim Hashishi, we say Friday night. Why Hashishi? It's to say Yoim Shishi. It was on the sixth day. What's Hashishi? Say Chazal. The hey is the hey hayidia. It's speaking about a certain sixth, the sixth of what? The sixth of Sivan, when Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave the Torah. Shekala elam talui ad shisha besivan. That the whole world and all of creation was talui va'oimed. It was shaky. It wasn't pasha. That it was going to remain firm. And it was in this shaky sort of imbalanced, non-sturdy existence until. Am Yisrael received the Torah. She kibli Yisrael as a Torah. Because she caused of me moigim eretz v'chol yoshveha anoichi tikanti amudeh hasela. A Chazal darshan was that mean darshan Rabbi Zeinu is chana davracha al kabbalas a Torah. Shal yadin is basi sa'olim. It was only through Am Yisrael receiving the Torah that tikanti amudeh hasela that the world's pillars were established firmly. Avol koydim kabbalas a Torah. But before Am Yisrael received the Torah, the world was in a state of bilbladas. There were no gedarim. There was no gedar with regard to what the world's laws were for. Sunrise, sunset had no purpose. There was no nates and there was no shkia. It meant nothing because the oilam azeh is all here, as Rabbi Yashaber Soloveitchik writes in, in, uh, in Ish Halacha, in Halachic Man, where he speaks about how the world can be seen as mamish, a, a halachic world. The way that a poisik looks like he describes, he walks along a river and he looks and what he's thinking is, is it kosher for a mikvah or it's not kosher for a mikvah? How about Natilas Yudai? How about, how about Tvilas Caleb? That's the way in which we look at nature because nature is there to service 
our ability to engage with the Torah in a very deep way, in a very real way. So until the Torah came down into the world, this world was Bechinas Hefker. It was an aspect of Hefker. It was ownerless. It was purposeless. It was, it, was, it was free, but in the worst sense of being free. It had no basis, no foundation, no, no home. And even the Kiyam of the world before Matim Taira, where there were generations and generations, I think a tough, 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 pay Dairas before Matim Taira, they were only there because Am Yisrael were destined to receive the Taira. That's not much of an existence, that they're totally on something that's going to happen in the future. Without the geder of the Torah, without these guidelines, without being able to live life within a framework of purpose, of meaning, of grand ideals, of broad-minded dreams and visions for what our lives could become as individuals, for what the world could look like broad-minded, big, mature, spiritually developed, expanded consciousness. Without that, the world is hefker kemidbar. The world before the, the Kabbalah satira, but each individual in and of him, his his or her own self. All the while that a person is not living or attempting, striving to live, davening to live, yearning to live, succeeding to live, growing while living in the framework of kashura, of the right, straight, steady way of living. And a person is not privileged to live with these incredible guidelines. Hefker. And that's what Ibn Achman said. That's called Hefker. That's called Hefkerus. Not a person who, who's, you know, not making sure that he could cover his rent at the end of the month, that he's not thinking about the realities of this world. That's, that's Hefker. But that's not Hefker like a person who's not thinking about paying rent to our Kaddish Baruch Hu Kaviyachal in a spiritual sense for hosting him in this world for a purpose. Heim Bechinas Hefker. Ke'in Hefker. Gadol Mizeh. There's no greater hefkeris. There's no greater irresponsibility. Mizeh k'she'in choyshe malachrisay k'tachlisay. Umayyeh mimenu ba'alma da'ase. When a person doesn't think and doesn't spend time worrying about what's going to be for eternity, la'achar p'tirasay. Like after we leave this world, what life is really about not to become so caught up in the realities of this world to forget why we were put here in the first place, which we speak about, which is a hevel, it's a shigayon, it's a futile vanity. Like we described from this computer game, like we say Sim City, right? Where you're building this sort of big amusement park and you drop in a, an individual and right away he starts going on the rides without thinking existentially, like who put me here and why? And why do I need to be a part of this? And what's the bigger, what's the bigger vision here? That's Hefkerus. And it's paradoxical, of course, Chaver come to Yeshiva, they learn in Yeshiva for Shana Aleph. And then the parents are very, 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 you know, have to come back, the kid's 17 years old. You have to come back, you have to go to college, very important. How are you gonna make a living? Mind you, there are YouTubers who play video games for a living and make 10 times more than doctors who were in college for nine years today. It's, you know, it's a little bit of a different situation. We don't want you to be mufkar. Where's your achrayas? And there's an element of truth there. Because Rabbi Nachman said, Gam hefkeris ain't srichem. Rabbi Nachman himself says this. Gam hefkeris ain't srichem. You have to take care of things. And you have to plan properly. And ishtadlus is extremely important by the Rebbe. Which people often miss, right? Because they take things out of context. Like we learned in a previous sicha. Ishtadlus, ishtadlus, ishtadlus. Very important. But hold on one second. What's more mufkar? 
The kid who wants to spend Shana Bet in Yeshiva for one more year and push off college, which is not going to make much of a difference usually in the in the larger scheme of things. And as much as the parents are able to support and able to, you know, to send the kid back for another year if they can. Is that more mufkar or is the Hefkeris a person to whom college, making a living is the most important thing to the extent that it precludes thinking about what college and making a living is even for. I mean, what, why are we so excited about being able to be financially supported so that we can what? What's more mufkar? Who's taking less achrayas? Says Rabbi Nassim, there's no greater hefker. Ki ein hefker gadol mizeh. There's no greater fanatical irresponsibility than a person who takes this world so seriously that we involve ourselves kol kule and mastering this silly world, which again, we have to try to go ahead and invest to make sure that we live well and not move for sure. But to spend all of our time figuring out how the financial system works and how this thing happens and how, how this world runs while leaving so little time, if at all, to think about, to worry about, to dream about, to focus on the essence of why there is a world in the first place, which is Avodah Hashem, which is Ruchnias, which is what daily Hispaidus is supposed to enable us to do, to carve out a period of time, an island of silence and stillness, where during our busy day, we can disengage with all the things that we need to do just to take care of the bare minimum hierarchy of needs, you know, the first two levels of shelter and water and food, just to make sure that we can survive in this world that takes a whole day. Says the Rebbe, how foolish would it be if we went through our whole lives taking care of our this worldly existence for no greater purpose other than to make sure that we survive, to make sure that we function as people without ever stopping to think about one time. And certainly if we can think about it once daily, and certainly if we could be people who operate out of the OS, out of the operating system of a from Yid, of an Ish Kasher, how terrible would it be if we never spent time investing in the essence of life for which we are making sure that we're not mufkar in relation to what the world considers to be hefkar, for which we are taking a chrais for our daily lives and for daily living. And he says over here, because it's impossible, it's impossible, like we say, it's impossible to escape that experience of death in any way. Even Mashiach himself will die. Not like the world thinks, that Mashiach will come and there will not be no death in the world. That's not true. Even when Mashiach comes and he should come today, he should come tonight. Anyway, Misa will not be something we can avoid. And only that will be the, will, will come the Oilam Ha'aruch, which is Oilam Ha'ba, which is the Yom Shekulei Shabbos. Is there any, any greater lack of achrayas than plowing through life with a this worldly focus, obsessed with trying to improve our situation while not, while not spending the requisite time to focus on why we're here in the first place? Over here, he quotes our Sicha. That we don't mean to live lives of irresponsibility. But the Amar, like we learned, that's not the true Afgeris. You want to know what real Afgeris means? The person who doesn't 
make himself completely unbound from all of this worldly distractions, not the obligations, but the distractions. And a person who's not mafkered himself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to say, Rabbanu Shalom, I'm making myself untethered from anything to do with this world. I'm, I'm up for grabs for you. I'm pronouncing myself hefker so that you can come and pick me up. If a person doesn't do that, zehu mufker ve'emes, that's true hefkeres. Like we learn. Nimsa turns out of this, we'll come to the end. To people, of course, none of us, but to people who are living lives where there's no rutsin and there's no thinking about the broader picture, the greater scheme, and it's difficult, and sometimes it's heavy to think about the big questions, and it's so much easier to just live, and why can't we just live, and why can't we just let live, and let live, and live, and just relax, and just calm down, and why do we have to be so intense all the time? It's so much easier for the moment. For the moment, it's easier. But we can't run away from those questions. We can't run away from the fact that this world is one big question mark. That's what this world is to a thinking person. This world is a, is a huge question mark. That's all it is. And we can try to numb ourselves and we can try to escape and we can try to run away and we can try to forget about the question mark of this world. But late one night, however many months or however many years it may take, when we're laying down in bed and really considering whether all of this that we're so invested in is actually contributing to a greater sense of fulfillment, to a greater sense of happiness, whether we feel okay. And the fog of that question starts filtering through the window. The feeling that we feel in that moment is that we wasted, we wasted our time. And that's mufka, that's hefkeiris, that's irresponsible. To give away the possibility of living a true life, mamish life, the MS life, and not again, not in this way of a hermit who sits on the top of a mountain meditating. Life, mamish, a human life. But there are many ways of doing that, there are many ways of experiencing life. That it should be a good life. It should be a life of mashma'ut. It should be a life of omek. It should be a life of understanding things, clarity, consciousness, confidence, elevation. How, hef, how hefgrit is and how much of gairis there is in letting go of all of that. Bishvil shakala. For a fleeting moment, Bishvil tanuge alam azeh, shu ketzel oiver. That not only are those pleasures themselves in a moment of, of, of you know, frivolity and the moment of numbness and the moment of escape, not only are those moments kitzel over that they're passing and they're fleeting, and that's the nature of Olamazeh encapsulated in the pinnacle of Olamazeh, which is the Tainuge Olamazeh, are fleeting like this whole world is fleeting and nothing in this world stays. And I think the whole entire human body itself regener regenerates all the cells and they shed and they, st and they start again. I think after a certain amount of years, the body, even though it looks the same, but it's a completely different body, physically speaking, because the cells are always regenerating. Nothing in this world is lasting. Food rots. And after the neshama leaves, the body wastes, the, the, the body wastes away. And so the pinnacle of that nature of Allah is in Tanugim. Is there anything more fleeting? Is there anything more fleeting? You sit down to the best feast in the world. How much could you eat already? At a certain point, you push, you can't eat anymore. So how long of a period of time were you experiencing intense pleasure? And that's true for all the Tanugim. They're fleeting. That's, that's how we define a Tainugashmi. But aside from that, and this is what we were speaking about before, it's not only that the pleasure itself is fleeting, so it's not worth it. It's that the pleasure itself is not pleasurable. It's filled with bitterness. With sorrow 
and anger and frustration when things don't go exactly the right way. And Rabbi Nachman has a story about this. I think we mentioned it about a person who goes, who travels the Marchak, and he goes to a big fair and he makes all this money and he's so proud and he's so successful and he's so wealthy and he's going to buy this and he's going to do that and all these different things. And I'm sure he has already taken trips like this. And so he's coming home to a gigantic fancy house with maids and servants and, and everything you could imagine. But along this trip, because he was so wealthy, he bought his wife like this incredibly beautiful ring. Mama's incredibly beautiful ring. But because she's so high maintenance, because she's already being pampered so much and money's just, you know, a non-issue, she doesn't like this style. She wanted something else. And so he comes home from this business trip, surrounded by opulence, surrounded by the most beautiful, wonderful, incredible things in Olam And he gives his wife the ring and she storms out of the room. And he's just as broken as the person next door who lives in a dilapidated shack, who's frustrated over the fact that he wasn't able to fill his stomach with the meager dinner that he put together from the money that he scraped together earlier that day. Both of them are just as frustrated. So what did it help him? What did it help him? And that's the Nakuda that we're speaking about over here. We're not talking about Olam Haba. We're talking Mamish about Olam Hazeh. The pleasures are Ketzel Oiver and the pleasures themselves are Me'uravim, Bebereros, Kas, Yagoin, Machoyves. And so when we make a Chesh Ben Sach HaKol, and we'll jump back into this Beis Hashem next week, when we make a Chesh Ben Sach HaKol, there's no sweeter deal that a Kaddish Baruch Hu handing us in a silver platter, the Olam HaNitzchi, not in a way that we need to sacrifice for it in our lives in this world to live a miserable life for Olam Haba. But all a Kaddish Baruch Hu asks us is to live the best possible life in this world so that we can then experience eternal time. Of, is there any greater deal than that? And therefore, is there any greater heft? and any greater lack of achrayis than a person who's not achroi to the to the kainai, to the to the to the kainai, to, to, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who acquires us who's waiting for us to look up at him and say Rabbi Shalom, I'm mufkir to you take me hold me I trust in you I'm willing to put your promises to the test I'm following you I'm walking after you to experience mamish the deepest time of the chayim toivim the chayim amitim, we should be zayich. It's devarim pshutim. I know because it's, it's something we speak about all the time, and it's its basics. But sometimes it's the devarim pshutim that need the biggest, biggest chazar, because this is the foundation. If we could get this, and we can mamish not just talk about it, and I'm speaking to myself, but put it into practice. Ashreinu, ashrecha ba'olam azeh, ashreinu ba'olam azeh, ba'ashreinu la'olam abba. Yeah, Ashrena, that we have tzaddikim like this, who are teaching us mamish in such a clear way, in such a way that's so push it and open and straight to the point. We should be zeichet to live it ever. Thank you so much for joining. To all of you, wonderful to see you again. And Bezer Hashem will try to get together Thursday. Thank you all for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you to all. Ashrena, Ashrena mamish.